Good morning, McLaren. Today is Friday, December 11th, 2020. The weather today will have occasional snow showers, high of 30 degrees, with winds out of the east at 5 to 10 miles per hour. There's a 50% chance of snow, and about one inch is expected of snow. Uh, the sun rose today at 7.07 a.m., and it will set at 4.37 p.m. And now the conclusion of Beethoven Lives Upstairs. April 20th, 1824. Dear Uncle, I know now that all of us have been quite happy of late. And the way I know it is that in the past few days, our happiness has vanished once again. With the symphony just two weeks away, Mr. Beethoven's moods are fierce. Caroline, his housekeeper, is going to leave to marry the baker next door. She told Mr. Beethoven today, and he became very angry. He picked up an egg and threw it at her. Then Mr. Schindler came rushing down the stairs like a scolded cat. He had told Mr. Beethoven that his new cake coat won't be ready for the concert in time. He tried to talk to Mr. Be Beethoven about another coat, but as Mr. Schindler said, the master is in no mood for details. And I have not helped matters. Today, when I was in his room, I disturbed some of his papers as I was passing by his desk. They fluttered to the floor. I am afraid these papers had been ordered in some very special way because Mr. Beethoven said, now I must do work again that I have already done. Uncle, just when life was getting better, I have ruined things again. Your nephew. April 28, 1824. My dearest Christoph, how shall I console you? Perhaps by telling you that Mr. Beethoven is famous for his temper and that his moods are not your fault. Imagine how frustrating his life must be. Imagine how lonely to hear no voices. Imagine hearing no birds sing, no wind in the trees, no pealing of the bells. Imagine he hears no music played, not even his own. So Mr. Beethoven has a great temper. How could he not? But if you listen to his music, you will hear that his heart is great as well. Too great to be angry for long at an innocent boy. You write, you write me that for the moment your happiness has vanished. I can give you my promise, Christoph, that unhappiness has a way of vanishing as well. Your uncle and friend, Carl. The unsigned and undated note below was written in May of 1824, on the eve of the first performance of the Ninth Symphony. It arrived tucked into the letter that follows it. Dear Uncle, Mr. Beethoven has forgotten the incident with the papers. He squeezed my shoulder in a friendly way when he passed me in the hall this afternoon. Now the house is quiet and I am alone. The concert is tomorrow night, and so, of course, I cannot sleep. I think of Mr. Beethoven alone upstairs. I have not heard him stir for quite some time. I wonder what he's thinking about. I wonder if he's awake tonight, like me. Perhaps he is hearing something beautiful in his head. May 7, 1824. Dear Uncle, Tonight, I have been to the Ninth Symphony. It is very late. I have already tried to sleep, but it seems I cannot do so before I describe this night to you. The concert looked as I expected. There was Mr. Beethoven on the stage, waving his arms, as I have seen him do so many times upstairs. And there were the singers. I had seen them often, too, tramping up and down our halls. And there were the musicians scowling at their charts. These sights were so familiar. It was the music, uncle, that took me by surprise. And when the music ended, the audience was on its feet, 
Everyone was standing and cheering and clapping and waving scarves and crying and trying to make Mr. Beethoven hear them. But he couldn't hear us, and he didn't know that we were cheering until one of the sopranos took his sleeve and turned him to face the crowd. Four times the audience finished their clapping and then began to clap and cheer again. Up on the stage, Mr. Beethoven bowed and bowed. As the carriage took us home, I could hear the music in my head, but my thoughts kept turning back to Mr. Beethoven himself. He has so many troubles. How can he have a heart so full of joy? I cannot describe the music, Uncle. I can tell only I can tell I can only tell you that the music made me think. Uncle, how difficult Mr. Beethoven's life must be to feel so much inside, even so much joy must be almost more than he can bear. Christoph. In June of 1824, I finally paid a visit to Vienna, to the home of my sister, her twin girls, and Christoph. It was Christoph, of course, who took the most delight in explaining the many eccentric cities of the genius up the stairs. This letter, the final portion of which is now missing, is the last in which my nephew mentions Mr. Beethoven. It arrived at my home in Salzburg almost a year after my visit to Vienna. March 31st, 1825. Dear Uncle, as you know, Mr. Beethoven moved away soon after your visit, but I have seen him again and thought you might like to hear about it. It was on the street. I saw him rushing by, humming to himself as always. I ran up and caught him by the sleeve. He looked confused at first, but then he recognized me. He said, it's the little gatekeeper, and took my hand in his. I took his book and asked if he was well. He had hoped his health would be better living away from the river. He told me his health has not improved. I wrote in his book that when I grow up, I am going to be a doctor like my father, and then I will make him better. He asked about mother and the twins, and he was glad to hear that mother is teaching piano again. And then I told him that we miss him. He squeezed my hands and looked down at the ground. And as for other news, the twins have finally stopped their screaming. I know, however, that our good luck will not hold. I have seen them exchanging looks in their carriage and can see that they are hatching some new plan. But uncle, best of all, mother has agreed to let me keep the spotted dog. I have named him Metronome because of his wagging tail. And now I'd like to play another uh, portion of a piece that Mr. Beethoven wrote. Um, you might recognize it, it's fairly popular. Um, it is called Moonlight Sonata. I hope you enjoy it.
Okay, friends, if it's your birthday today, Friday, December 11, 2020, happy birthday. I hope you have a day filled with kindness, friendliness, and peace. We are all in this together. See you next time.